Hello, everybody. I wanted to share a very important bit of information about the history of port production here at Messinahoff. You know, people have asked me, how, how come you make port? How can you make port? Well, way back in 1983, we released our first port. And we made that port in the same technique that the Portuguese make it. You know that technique where you take Lenoir, which is our port grape, and you harvest, and you begin fermentation, and then you add high-proof brandy to the product. And that arrests the fermentation. So the whole process takes about five or six days. The first four days, it's actively fermenting. You add the brandy, and the brandy intoxicates the yeast, and now you have a port wine. Messina Hop was blessed in the fact that we could call it port because we've been producing it way before 2006 when the treaty between the United States and Portugal occurred. And then from that point on, anybody who would like to make a port can't call it port because of the fact of that treaty. We, we've been making port since 1983. So we were making a lot of port. Everyone loved it. We won gold medals everywhere, making, the, making it in the way that the Portuguese make it. And Lenoir is a perfect grape for making port. Well, in 1986, then the TABC contacted me and said, Paul, you know, your license to make uh, wine only goes up to 22%. So you can't buy brandy. You can't buy spirits. Well, I said to them, but we're already making it in the Portuguese style and we need the brandy. And they said, well, I'm sorry, you can't do that. Well, that year, Merrill and I were going to the Unified Conference. It's a big wine conference in California. And we discovered K1 yeast. It had just been developed and this yeast can live all the way up to 20% alcohol. Very unusual for yeast because most yeast fatigue and they and they fall off. Fermentation stops normally between 14 and 16 percent alcohol. So we bought the K1 yeast. We brought it home and we used it for the 1986 vintage. So here I have a bottle of the 1985 port, which was made in the Portuguese style. And here we have Paulo Port from 2001, and this is made in a new style. So when the TABC said I couldn't buy spirits, I had to come up with some solution. So we found K1 yeast. And what I discovered is that when I added the K1, it had a very aggressive fermentation in the first week to 10 days. But then after that, even though it's, it's continued to live, it was slowing down. So I found that if I added some more yeast to the fermentation, it started robustly again. And then I did the same thing in the third week. And I did the same thing in the fourth week. And I trademarked the term sequential inoculation. And it has been the technique that we have used ever since for our estate, Papa Paolo ports, and, and our, our, even our barrel reserve port. Uh, and, and so what it does is it allows the K1 yeast to stay viable throughout the fermentation and we can get back to the 18, 19% alcohol that ports are used to being. So when you take adversity and then you, you come up to a sense of creativity, you wind up with a wonderful solution. And now we have sequential inoculation as part of the Messina Hof way of making port. So here at Messina Hof, we actually make two styles of port. One, using the sequential uh, concept of adding yeast sequentially, week after week, until the fermentation gets to 
18 to 19 percent. And in Fredericksburg, we make our port in the Portuguese style where brandy is added. So I wanted all of you to know the story behind the product. And it's amazing, you know, in life, you wind up with adversity and, and that will always happen. I think it's very, very important. You turn it, turn that attention to the Lord and say, Lord, I need a solution. And that's where sequential inoculation came from. So on behalf of everyone here at Messina Hoff, I wanted to share the story of how Messina Hoff makes port. And God bless you all and take care.